Hello everyone, my name is Prodesilaos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to offer you a status update, which of course you can infer the subject of from the title of this video, as well as the title of this document. I have prepared a presentation for you, so let's uh, go straight away to it. Uh, let me enable the presentation mode. Uh, so, uh, the modus themes, my project uh, for Emacs, are now uh, bundled up together with the upstream Emacs distribution. So going forward, these themes will be available to anyone who builds directly from the master branch and they will eventually be built into Emacs in the next uh, stable release, which will be release uh, 28.1, which is of course uh, further into the future. For the time being, this is just a development branch the master branch of uh, Emacs. In case you don't know, uh, I am the developer of two themes. Uh, one is called uh, Modus Operandi. The other one is called Modus Vivendi. Operandi is the light one and Modus Vivendi is the dark one. Uh, together, I call, I call these the Modus uh, themes. And uh, the overarching objective of this project is to uh, always conform with the highest accessibility standard of color contrast of relative luminance between the background and uh, the text that is cast on it and the foreground. Uh, so the technical name for this standard is WCAG AAA, AAA, and this represents a minimum contrast ratio between background and foreground of 7 to 1. So this is a very high uh, threshold, a very high, a very uh, ambitious target. Uh, so uh, in case you are uh, a, a regular user, you are most probably uh, running a stable version of Emacs, the latest of which is 27.1. Uh, but if you are, for example, on Debian or derivatives, you are most likely running 26 uh, point something. So uh, this news uh, has no effect on uh, your uh, instance of Emacs. It's only for people who uh, fetch directly uh, from the Git source and build it uh, themselves. Uh, for those of you who are on uh, stable versions of Emacs, the themes are available in uh, package format uh, from several archives. There is, of course, Melpa, which builds directly from the master branch of my uh, repo. There is Melpa stable, which includes the latest tag, tagged release. Uh, the same for GNU Elpa and for Geeks, uh, the Geeks uh, package manager, which is the central tool of the Geeks system distribution. And also there is the stable, the latest uh, stable release for uh, Debian, currently uh, this is for Debian Unstable, codenamed uh, SID, and will eventually be part of the next uh, release of Debian Stable, which I believe is Debian 11, uh, codenamed Bullseye, but I am uh, not entirely sure on this uh, right now. Uh, so let's talk a bit about uh, what happened. Uh, earlier this week, uh, Stefan Kangas, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly, so apologies uh, in advance, uh, who is a core contributor of Emacs, opened a bug report, which uh, was a wish list item, and asked whether it would be possible uh, to include uh, modus operandi and modus vivendi in core Emacs. So this was an email that was sent to the mailing list uh, that tracks uh, bug reports and I was uh, carbon copied uh, in uh, the email as well as Eli Zaretsky, which is the maintainer of Emacs. And uh, the long uh, story short is that uh, Eli approved of the request and they asked me uh, whether I would be okay to share the code with Emacs to contribute it directly uh, to Emacs. Uh, so of course I said yes, uh, I have already done all uh, the paperwork uh, to uh, assign copyright to the Free Software Foundation and things that I have talked about in the past, but uh, it was a fairly straightforward process. 
uh, I notified them of the latest tagged release version 0.12.0 and uh, Stefan Kangas uh, made sure that everything was, was uh, pushed into master. This happened uh, yesterday, so here I am today announcing uh, the news. Uh, so, uh, a, a couple of technical notes. Uh, this is uh, the fact that Emacs currently ships the latest tagged release of the themes, so uh, not the latest commit from the head of my master branch. Uh, I have been releasing stable uh, tagged releases rather on a monthly cadence. Uh, so uh, this was uh, like uh, two days ago, I released uh, 0 0.12. The next one will be uh, uh, end of September, beginning of October. Uh, you know, uh, there is no fixed date, but around uh, that time. Um, ideally, I would prefer to sync uh, the latest commit from my master branch directly uh, to uh, Emacs, but this is not uh, possible right now in terms of logistics because I do not have uh, commit access. I cannot uh, push uh, changes directly to Emacs' Git repo. Uh, what I can do right now is uh, notify the people, the developers uh, through a bug report, basically uh, send an item to the mailing list and tell them, uh, hello, a new version has been released. Please uh, fetch it and update things accordingly. Uh, no problem for me, of course, that's uh, something I am uh, more than happy to do. Uh, but because some other people are involved, I would, I would rather not have them, uh, you know, effectively run after me whenever I make a commit, because uh, it often happens that I may push three or four commits in a single day, so it would be too cumbersome, too uh, bureaucratic, if you will, uh, to have this back and forth the whole time. Uh, to uh, the mailing lists and ask for people to do stuff on my behalf. Of course, uh, I could uh, spam them until they grant me access rights, but I, I won't do that. I am not uh, that kind of evil genius. But if they ever grant me access rights uh, out of their own volition, I will be more than happy to uh, sync uh, my latest commit uh, with uh, the upstream Emacs uh, distribution. Until then, it will always be the latest tagged release of the themes. Let's move on to the next uh, steps. Uh, I do not plan to slow down, of course. The fact that uh, the themes are shipped with Emacs uh, has no effect whatsoever in my uh, overarching uh, uh, objective of what the themes are. Uh, and uh, what I want to do with them, which is um, that this is, uh, I consider this uh, my uh, major contribution uh, to a community from which I have benefited greatly. This is, of course, uh, the Emacs uh, community in particular. Uh, Emacs is the epicenter of my computing experience. I use it for practically everything. I use it, of course, for this presentation to uh, write prose, to uh, write code, to read my email, my news, to browse the web. You know, basically everything that Emacs does, uh, I uh, have configured it to do it for me as well. The rest of the environment is of secondary importance. What matters is Emacs. So I, am, I consider it my duty to give something back to this community, the Emacs community in particular, and also uh, indirectly to the wider uh, free software, Libre software uh, community that, of course, I am uh, a member of. Uh, some highlights in uh, case you don't know or have uh, missed them. Uh, the themes are, of course, designed for accessibility, but this is not a rigid constraint. There are many interpretations within this overarching framework of, of what it means to have accessible color combinations. So the themes provide a broad range of customization options. You should refer uh, to the README for the relevant uh, symbols. Uh, for what you need to do to configure them. Uh, and uh, these uh, options will um, modify uh, practically every aspect of the themes. 
Uh, some of them are small in scope, others will uh, refashion uh, large aspects of the interface, so please read the docs. Speaking, speaking of documentation, there is a new HTML version of the README file, uh, which is now available on my website, protasilas.com forward slash modus hyphen themes in case uh, you want to check. Of course, I will share the text of this presentation. This is plain text and this is an org mode uh, buffer. I will uh, share it uh, below the video, which will be posted on my website. If you are watching this on the video hosting platform, there will be a link uh, to my website from where you can get uh, the presentation. And of course, check the rest of my website if you will. Uh, as I said, I am not slowing down. Uh, preparations have already uh, started. Everything uh, has been set in motion for the next uh, tagged release, which I tentatively name 0.13.0. We will see whether this is the case. Normally, this will be the case, but you never know. Once it is uh, made available, I will, of course, uh, sync it with uh, upstream Emacs. And of course, with all the other package archives, Melpa, Melpa stable, all those uh, things that I already mentioned. Uh, earlier today, I pushed a commit that introduces a new customization option, uh, which I think will be the last among the major customization options, because I think everything else is covered, unless, of course, you provide feedback to the contrary. So what this customization option does is it controls the overall aesthetics of diffs for Magit, uh, diff mode, ediff, smerge mode, and vdiff. Uh, I will demo it right away, just a very quick uh, demo. I have everything here. You can see this is a diff buffer. What you see here is the standard, the default looks. The colors are fairly pronounced. You can clearly tell what is green, what is red. You can clearly tell what has been added and what has been removed. So this is the default. Uh, if you enable the desaturated uh, option, the desaturated value, of course you have to check the readme, uh, so this is just a quick demo. So if you enable this, it will uh, tone down all the colors. You can see now they are, as the name implies, desaturated. And then there is another value that you can use, uh, which is foreground only, FG only. So let's try this very quickly. You can see now that there are no backgrounds and instead we have color coded text uh, to denote the information here on display, removed and added lines. Let's have uh, word-wise or refined changes. You can see uh, that uh, we have some background when it comes to this specific uh, option. We have some background, otherwise it would be impossible uh, to differentiate uh, refined changes from the rest of the diff output. Uh, but of course, these are smaller in scope. Let's see how uh, we get the desaturated looks. You can see the desaturated looks with wordwise changes or refined changes. And then the default looks, you can see how it is again. Uh, and expect the same for uh, modus vivendi, the dark theme. This one is modus operandi. And of course, the same for uh, all uh, diff related modes, maggot, ediff, etc., etc. No need to uh, belabor the point. You get the idea. Uh, you can expect the same kind of uh, attention to detail on all sorts of configuration options. There was another one that I uh, published uh, some weeks ago, which is part of the latest stable release, uh, which uh, totally uh, changes the way completion frameworks look. So Helm, Ivy, iComplete, Ido, uh, Sale, and I think that's it. Maybe I forgot, and Selectrum, of course. Uh, so yeah, they change the looks of those as well. So make sure to check the README for more on the matter. Uh, of course, this is my project, but that I have been working on ever since I switched to Emacs a bit more than a year ago, but it would be a mistake to claim uh, that this is uh, my own work 
because I have benefited greatly from uh, contributions uh, from other people, from the broader community. So the fair thing to say is that this is a community effort uh, and I just happen to be the maintainer of a collective uh, project, a collective effort. So I want to thank uh, some people in particular over here. Uh, this is in alphabetic order, hopefully. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Uh, but so please don't uh, assign any importance to who comes uh, first or second and things like that. I want to thank uh, Anders Johansson. Uh, Anders, uh, I believe, uh, was the person to send the first uh, patch for a customization option. It was an option to change the looks of the fringes. You know, uh, in case you don't know, there is a fringe mode that ships with Emacs, so check that out. And uh, basically by studying the patch that Anders sent, I was inspired to start using all those uh, uh, advanced uh, constructs of Emacs Lisp like if p case and things of that nature to eventually develop all those uh, customization options some of which are a bit more uh, complex than a typical uh, yes or no uh, so thanks uh, for that i want to thank uh, andre alexandre gomes uh, who helped me uh, with several issues but one of the most important one was um, a bug that uh, pertained to byte compilation. So Andre helped uh, uh, figure out what the problem was and uh, check, uh, do some benchmarking to see what the relevant uh, changes in byte compilation time were. Uh, a fairly tricky issue, but the gist is that without Andre, I would not be able uh, to do that at that time. Uh, Andre also offered uh, valuable feedback that uh, eventually informed the design of several org uh, interfaces such as checkboxes, uh, dates, uh, tables, and maybe others as well. Uh, so uh, thank you for that as well. I want to thank Basil L. Condovunicius, uh, who is uh, also an, a contributor to uh, Core Emacs. Uh, Basil helped me uh, simplify the code throughout the themes uh, by uh, removing some obsolete uh, expressions, some old uh, style expressions with more uh, succinct ones. Uh, Basil also helped fix some, uh, fix some issues and address some inconsistencies that existed uh, between the themes, some discrepancies, if you will. And of course, uh, Basil, if you check uh, the contributions that Basil makes uh, in Emacs, you can tell that always has an eye for making those uh, precise contributions, you know, finding that little thing that is very important, but others may miss. Uh, Basil is there to uh, handle things uh, like a champ. I want to thank uh, Damien Cassou. Uh, who has helped me with uh, several issues again. Uh, Damien uh, introduced uh, an issue, uh, brought rather, raised an issue about uh, fly check, how it was, uh, it would highlight things in a very intense and distracting uh, manner. And by uh, modifying fly check, I also modified fly make. They have the same uh, overall presentation. Uh, I also benefited from uh, feedback with regard to not much the email client and with Magit Blame's, uh, uh, Magit's Git Blame uh, interface. So these are all uh, very valuable indeed. I want to thank uh, Davan Vaidya. Again, uh, I am sorry if I am mis mispronouncing those names. Uh, uh, the alternative would be just to have you read them from here, but I at least I am trying, so sorry if I am making mistakes as I go. Uh, I want to thank them for the Debian packages. Uh, as I said, these are currently in Debian Unstable, Debian SID, and they are slated uh, for release in the next Debian Stable release. Uh, so, a, a small correction. Not Debian packages, Debian package single, uh, 
because singular because uh, the themes are bundled up together in a single uh, Debian package. You just uh, do apt install uh, elpa modus themes and you get that. The information is on the, in the readme, so again, check the docs. I want to thank Len Trigg, who, is, uh, who helped me um, refactor the themes in a way that improved uh, how um, colors were defined and also to let users access the color variables directly and ultimately to be able as a do-it-yourself uh, option to be able to directly override those uh, variables and those color values with user defined ones uh, check the readme because i have i just pushed a commit on how you can do this if you want to be creative you can define a minor mode which will uh, totally change how the themes look and of course it's up to you it's diy so you do whatever you want the point is that the themes uh, also uh, allow for that kind of uh, approach it is very true to the spirit of Emacs. I wish to thank Manuel Uberti. Uh, Manuel has been a long time uh, contributor, uh, lots and lots of issues on the issue tracker, uh, a ton of uh, feedback of great value of course and uh, Manuel has been uh, directly responsible uh, for uh, helping me support a broad range of packages and uh, also to refine all sorts of things customization options and things of that nature and of course uh, Manuel is a, a Helm user and uh, the Helm interface uh, interfaces uh, have benefited immensely uh, from Manuel's uh, feedback so thanks again for this and of course as I said uh, a regular contributor and an ongoing uh, contributor so uh, this is not just in past tense this is uh, always uh, uh, happening I wish to thank Mark Barton. Uh, Mark uh, reported uh, several issues uh, about uh, various org uh, interfaces, specifically org tables and uh, org uh, agenda buffers. And by addressing those, uh, we have been able uh, to offer better support for these uh, commonly used uh, cases. For these, you know, a very uh, org is of course a very valuable ecosystem. So of course, uh, having uh, first class uh, support uh, for these is of paramount importance. And this is of course continued in the next page. I wish to thank uh, Murillo Pereira, uh, who is the person uh, to report the very first issue uh, long before I published uh, a Melpa version of those uh, themes. And uh, Murillo uh, in that issue told me that there was an inconsistency with the color that was used for the um, HL line mode. So the, the mode that highlights the current line. But the gist is that uh, it uh, allowed me to understand fairly early in the process that I would need to expand the palette and to have dedicated colors because of uh, the multitude of interfaces that Emacs uh, offers. So you cannot really limit yourself to uh, what is common, for example, in terminal emulators, 16 color codes, because then the result will definitely be suboptimal. So thank you, Murillo, for that. I wish to thank uh, Shreyas Raghavan, who is again a long time uh, contributor in the issue tracker like uh, Manuel and is still contributing lots of uh, valuable uh, feedback. Uh, again, this is about a series of uh, contributions about MU4E, about HTML emails in MU4E, about uh, making sure that we differentiate between replies, drafts, forwarded messages, all sorts of things. Uh, valuable feedback in various customization options such as what I mentioned earlier with the completion uh, UIs and lots of other things. I may forget the issues, uh, all of them, but the gist is that uh, again, this is a long time contributor and I am uh, most uh, thankful uh, for having them on board. Ah, of course, yeah, a major one is the so-called rainbow blocks 
uh, for uh, org uh, source blogs. Uh, you should check the README for that in case you work with a multitude of uh, languages, of programming languages. You may want to have uh, color-coded uh, blocks for each block. So for example, Emacs Lisp is uh, purple and uh, Shell is blue and Python is yellow. I don't remember the exact uh, codes, but that's uh, the gist of it. So uh, please make sure to check that as well. Again, check the docs. Uh, GitLab user Ben helped me with several issues, uh, one of which was uh, the so-called mixed fonts. So when you are using these themes, if you check the readme as well, you can define uh, your font family of choice for the default uh, typeface, for the variable pitch typeface, and for the fixed pitch typeface. And I have also a video demo if you check my backlog, my recent backlog on how to do this and what is the overall effect. You can also see it here. For example, you can see that this is monospaced and this is uh, proportionately spaced. This is as well proportionately spaced. And you need to make sure that all layout elements such as uh, tables are properly aligned. So uh, Ben uh, was of great uh, help uh, when it, uh, to make this happen. Ben also helped uh, design the looks of tab, bar, mode, and the relevant uh, interfaces, you know, uh, tabs at the top of the uh, frame. Uh, I don't have this now, but if you are using uh, tabs, center tabs, tab bar mode, tab line mode, uh, then of course uh, you can see the effect. I wish to thank user, uh, GitLab user Dinko, uh, who identified an incorrect expression with those uh, rainbow blocks uh, that I mentioned. And this uh, would uh, produce uh, a ton of warnings, which I had missed. And uh, thanks to Dinko for spotting this, because it would be very annoying to have users uh, have to deal with all those uh, warnings. Thanks to user uh, Fuchso, uh, for identifying a major bug with byte compilation. This is the issue that I was working with uh, Andrea Alessandra Gomes, and uh, we fixed that issue eventually. And uh, also, uh, thanks to Fuchso for other issues uh, that were about uh, some color inconsistencies. Uh, user Occam SN, I'm not sure if this is pronounced as a single word, but anyway, the point is, uh, that this user suggested um, an alternative, if you will, to how I was defining the bold weight, the heavy typographic weight. And what I eventually did with this was to uh, refactor uh, the entire themes so that now it is possible with a simple uh, way, a simple expression, it is in the readme, you can specify what bold means uh, for your purposes. So for example, I am using a monospaced uh, font that I have uh, built myself, uh, Iosefka that I have uh, built myself, uh, and it has a semi-bold uh, weight. So I define semi-bold for all bold uh, interfaces. So I have this enabled and with a simple turnkey solution, you have it throughout the themes. I wish to thank all those other people. I won't name them one by one. I hope I didn't miss anyone. If I did, it was not intentional. My apologies for that. Uh, I wish to thank also uh, the person who maintains the geeks packages. I do not know uh, the name of that person. If you do, uh, please let me know. I want to add it in the readme, but of course it's your prerogative. You may prefer to remain anonymous. So uh, thanks again uh, for uh, your uh, contributions. And I must also thank everyone who has contacted me via email. Of course, I will not share your name. This is private information, but thank you very much for your feedback. It is very much appreciated. Uh, let's move on because we still have some more to go. Indirect contributions, these are also important. It is what Newton uh, referred to of uh, standing on the, soldier, the 
shoulders of giants because you never operate in a vacuum there is some prior art there is someone else out there whose work has helped you in one way or another so i wish to thank uh, fabrice neeson the developer of the popular leuven uh, themes Leuven is also a nice city in Belgium, so uh, I have fond memories of Belgium and I visited that place several times. So uh, thank you Fabrice for uh, that great project. It inspired me to, uh, for a customization option about org headings, specifically to add the background to them and an overline so that they would look like sectioned headings. This was inspired from the Leuven uh, theme. I wish to also thank uh, Bozidar Batsov, who is the maintainer, uh, among others, of the Zenburn, the Zenburn theme for Emacs. And what I copied from Zenburn is a specific def macro, which uh, defines how uh, the color variables for the palette are parsed. And this is uh, what enabled those advanced customization options for users who want to uh, change uh, things themselves to override individual values and the things I mentioned earlier. So thank you to those people as well. And I must also thank uh, three uh, core Emacs contributors, uh, Stefan Monnier, who is of course a long time uh, Emacs contributor. I believe Stefan was also a maintainer of Emacs at some point, but I am new to the scene, so I may uh, miss some context, apologies for that. At any rate, uh, what I know is that Stefan Monnier is the driving force behind GNU Elpa. And whenever I want to publish a new version to GNU Elpa, I contact Stefan and uh, he makes things happen. So thank you, Stefan Monnier. I wish to also thank another Stefan, Stefan Kangas, who is the person who uh, opened the, the bug slash uh, wish uh, to include the modus themes in Emacs and is the person who actually made the commit and wrote the news entry uh, for uh, the themes. And of course, to the Emacs maintainer, Eli Zaretsky, who uh, in conversation with Stefan Kangas approved of the request and uh, basically asked me if I was okay with it. And I said, yes. And so here we are. But I must also thank uh, someone else who has not contributed directly to the themes, but who has, me, who has been of immense uh, value uh, to me personally, to my evolution as an Emacs Lisp uh, tinkerer, coder, whatever, programmer, I don't know. Uh, but this is Omar Antolin uh, Camarena. Uh, of course, if you have checked my .emacs, you already know that I am using several of Omar's uh, packages. I have learned a lot from uh, the code that Omar uh, has written. Of Omar is, of course, an accomplished uh, programmer, but I have also benefited from uh, answers that I have received to questions I sent uh, to him. So thank you, Omar, uh, once again. I have said this many times in private but here it is once again. And let's conclude with some uh, final thoughts. Uh, I wish to say, I wish to share, sorry, I wish to say that um, we all benefit from contributions to Emacs that concern uh, design features. Of course, it's not either or, it's not we want only people to uh, talk about the design, we also want people to talk about the nitty gritty, about uh, backend uh, stuff and about uh, what goes on under the hood, but we also need to care about uh, how things work, how they look. There was a mega thread, uh, a multitude of threads in the Emacs uh, Devel mailing list uh, a while ago, which was under the broad uh, theme of why is Emacs so square? And basically you can uh, go through the archives and read it. It is a, a ton of uh, emails from all sorts of people who contributed in those uh, exchanges. 
And what it basically highlighted is the fact that we need more motivated individuals to do work on the aesthetics of Emacs. Nothing in Emacs will happen on its own. If you know how to do something, if you want to see something happen, you have to make it happen. It's as simple as that. Emacs is a community effort. It is uh, comprised of volunteers. No one is uh, paid to do this. Everything is pro bono. We do this in our free time. So of course, the more people who are willing to uh, share part of their time uh, to this effort, the better off we are as a community and as a project, as a text editor and programmable computing environment. Which brings me to uh, the well-known expression of form follows function, which uh, sometimes is expressed uh, in normative terms as form should follow function. Uh, I, of course, agree with the salient point. Of course, you want first to get things right and then you can worry about their um, appearance. But uh, we should not take this too literally. We should not interpret it too strictly because it will then obfuscate, it will conceal the fact that there is no such thing as a formless function. It is impossible to have function without form. There is always some kind of interface, some kind of underlying philosophy that uh, underpins the design, the implementation of a given uh, technology. So what we really need is to make sure that people who are not uh, entirely aware of their uh, design principles can come together in an open forum with uh, people who have an eye for design, for aesthetics, and make sure that these people communicate with each other so that we can have the best of both worlds. We can have things that work well under the hood, but also to make sure that interfaces are designed to um, empower us. That's the gist of what we want our computers to do. Because computers uh, are tools that are, are or should be about making our life easier. We should uh, avoid the trap, uh, which is also an intellectual uh, rationalization, if you will, but we should avoid the trap of assuming as constant the constraints imposed upon us by a given technology. Uh, of course, technology changes, so those constraints are always transient. They do not last forever. So we should never ever assume the established order, the status quo, as uh, something that is external to what we are doing. We should not use it as an excuse for inertia. We should always try to improve things and we should always be willing to think outside the box as uh, we often say because there is always something that informs the uh, functions that we are using. There is always some form to any given function. In conclusion, you can always help even if you have no knowledge of how Emacs works or even if you don't know how to code. Remember, I am not a programmer. It is not my job. I started Emacs about a year ago. I didn't know any kind of ELISP. It was extremely weird to see all those nested parentheses. It was very confusing at the beginning, but here I am uh, making a contribution to uh, core Emacs, which is kind of a, sort of a, a pillar of the free software movement. So you don't need to be an expert, a world-class programmer to contribute. You just need to start small, find some area that is of immediate uh, interest, of your immediate interest, and make sure to contact the right person to help them uh, make things happen. For example, if you see something with regard to the themes that you would like to see it made different, you can uh, send me an email or open an issue uh, in my Git repository or find some other means to contact me anyway, but you get the idea. Don't be afraid, always be willing to contribute. 
Again, Emacs is a community effort. Emacs is made up of volunteers. Nothing, nothing, nothing will happen on its own. You must be prepared to lend your uh, hand, to lend a hand. So that's all, I think. I think that's all, uh, folks. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I understand this presentation is a bit longer than I had anticipated. So sorry if I uh, kept uh, rambling and rambling. Uh, so that's all for now, folks. Uh, no need to bother you anymore. Uh, the Modus themes are now shipped with Emacs. I am, of course, elated. I am very happy and I am looking forward uh, two greater things to come. Thanks again. Goodbye, folks.